Hi everyone, welcome to Grandma Gina's Kitchen. Thank you for joining me today. I wanted to do a couple fun, easy recipes for you today. Let me turn on this other light, see if that makes it brighter in here. There we go, all right. <laughs> so I am gonna be doing a chocolate uh, fondue dip and we're gonna use our mini Dutch that we just had on special uh, in, well, March to May. And then I'm also gonna do a pesto pasta salad. So I think you guys will love it. I, and I use the bow tie noodles, so I think it'll be really good. I think you guys will love it. Super, all of them are super simple. So um, I already have some water boiling over here. Or is that getting ready to boil? It's not quite ready to boil yet. And then my son is making an amazing roast. So I have to, let, I don't know if you guys could see it, but I'll give you guys a peek at it later. Uh, so he's making this amazing roast with mushrooms and potatoes and carrots, but I thought I'd make a pesto pasta salad to go with it. And then we want to have some fondue for dessert because uh, my grandson's here, my daughter's here, my son's here. <laughs> so now's the time to make this so that it's not here all week for my husband and I to eat. All right, all right, so I just got done washing my hands. So let's do, let's do the uh, fondue. Well, I'm gonna get the noodles. Actually, I think I should get the noodles in the water first. So turn you that way a little bit. And I'm gonna do, I have my three quart here. Yeah, the water's boiling already. And I'm gonna use about two thirds of a package of noodles. I'm just gonna go ahead and add those in here. And we'll get those cooking. Cause those should take a, probably about uh, 12 minutes. So I'm just gonna get those going. There we go. I'm just gonna give them a little turn so that they don't stick together. And then I'm gonna leave the lid uh, cracked. That way, uh, it hopefully doesn't overboil. It might, but I'll have to keep an eye on it. So since I'm using higher temperatures, right? Okay, so now we're gonna do our fondue. So we had our mini Dutch on special. If you didn't get one, I'm so sorry. They're so beautiful. It's a beautiful size four quart, but it also came with a fondue set. So you get these beautiful fondue forks, which I'm gonna set right over here. And I'll show you. And it has this little cover. But good news is actually, if you did get this uh, fondue set, it also fits inside the MP5. So our electric piece uh, that's five quarts, we use it a lot of times as a rice cooker. It's a great one, it's five quarts, but this will also fit in there. So if you're going on, if you're going to a potluck or something and you're bringing the fondue, right? <laughs> okay, so I have some uh, raw cacao, uh, organic raw cacao and or organic maple. And I thought I grabbed a measuring cup out, but I guess I didn't. All right, so here's one that, this is um, half a cup. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna add a half a cup, of, a cup of uh, cacao. Okay, so there's half. And then make that one whole cup. There we go. One cup of cacao, and I'm gonna close it because I don't wanna spill it. <laughs> I, I get lucky like that sometimes. I'll leave things open and then I'll spill them. And then we're gonna do the maple syrup, the organic maple syrup. So we use this also for our pancakes and everything because it's just straight maple instead of having a bunch of high fructose corn syrup and all those horrible ingredients they add to the food. <laughs> this is just pure maple, all right? So we're just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna do a cup of maple, woohoo. So we got a, something very sweet. I actually think it's gonna, oh yeah, a cup of maple. Uh, this is gonna be very sweet. So don't do this right before bedtime. <laughs> even though it's vegan, <laughs> even though uh, there, there's, um, it's chocolate, raw chocolate, and that's grown straight from the, the plant, uh, and we're using maple, right? There, it still releases in um, dopamine into the system. So it makes you feel really good and I promise you that you will feel really good. <laughs> I know whenever I eat this, I get real giggly. So, and then we're just gonna mix this up really well. So if you were gonna do like chocolate covered strawberries um, and you wanted to put them in the fridge and stuff, you want them to cling really well, you could add a little bit of coconut oil in here. But I just like to go ahead and do it just like this. Whew, it's really powdery. So. There we go. But you can see it's starting to mix up. I guess I could have got my uh, my mixer and it would probably be a lot better. 
<laughs> Let's see if I have it handy. Oh yeah, there it is, right there. Oh, now I have to lick this chocolate. Oh, darn. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's gonna work better. All right, so we're just gonna get this mixed up. And then I have some, let me show you. I have strawberries, blackberries, uh, cherries, and bananas. So I bought a ton of bananas to do this because I love it with bananas, but all the bananas got eaten. So good thing I had some frozen ones in the freezer. So we're gonna have some frozen bananas with chocolate on it, right? That'll be delicious. I always like that anyways, right? So there we go. Yeah, it does whip a lot faster if you use the, the whipper. The whipper. <laughs> all right, the whisk. <laughs> I like to call it the whipper. Not that I ever whipped anyone with it, but just my chocolate and my eggs right all right there we go look at that done two ingredients right super yummy delicious and then you can use your little fondue sticks and you could get let's say you could do a cherry you could do a strawberry you get a strawberry cherry strawberry a blackberry Ooh, ah. And you could do a banana. Oh, I don't know how well the frozen bananas will stay on there. There we go, all right? So we're just gonna, let me take my whisk out. Oh my goodness, something else I have to lick. <laughs> Poor me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I'm just dipping my banana in there. Oh, I don't know how well these frozen bananas are gonna work. Uh, I forgot to grab a tray to put these on, so I'm hoping my son, he's kind of, he, he must smell the chocolate. Anyways, they're, they're down here. <laughs> and uh, if you could grab me one of those, I'm just gonna lay those on here, on there and let them set while I dip a couple more things. All right, there we go. And we're, we're gonna do a blackberry. All right. And I love when the kids come to visit, so sometimes I just have to make something special, right? And we got a chocolate covered strawberry. And then we're gonna do a chocolate covered cherry, which will be interesting because the pit's in it. <laughs> so you'll still have to get the pit out, but oh yeah, I'm chocolate covered cherries. All right, so I have those all set. There we go. And then I'm gonna do some more because I have a whole tray of them. So I'm just gonna get those all ready. And then that those will be ready and I'll take a picture and show you guys what that looks like. So right now I think our pasta Oh, it's doing great. Okay, it has a few more minutes. I didn't set a timer, which I should have. Let's see what, what that's at, let's see. I have it on the really small burner and I had it on medium. So I think I'm gonna turn it up a little bit just so we can get that done. And let me set a timer for five minutes just because, let's see, I think we've been on here for five minutes. So that'll work out. And then I'm gonna keep dipping. I'm gonna go ahead and dip some more things so we can have a delicious, fondue you don't have to leave them on the sticks i'm going to actually take them off the sticks because i know when the kids come in they're going to want to use the the fondue sticks right all right so there we go and then i'm going to go ahead and do some more banana now the frozen bananas seem like they're i know they're going to taste delicious but they're uh sliding off the fondue stick really easy because they're frozen right there we go do some more strawberries. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm gonna be in chocolate heaven in a little bit, <laughs> in a little bit here. We did this at our cookie clash last year and I cannot stop giggling. The kids were doing cartwheels all over the place because they were all pumped up on, on it too. But it was delicious and we didn't really have to feel guilty because we had, you know, just a couple key, key ingredients. We didn't have to add a ton of junk to it, right? There's no high fructose corn syrup. There's no um, um, fructose in it. There's no uh, uh, things that keep it from separating. I can't remember the chemicals. All the chemicals they put in our food is <laughs> just terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyways, but it was nice when you could find something delicious but not have to feel so guilty about it. All right, so that's our chocolate fondue. And that is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna set this to the side so I can start showing you how to set up our pesto pasta salad. And so I just have a, a bowl here. And I have some feta cheese crumbles. I 
have some uh, grape tomatoes that I cut in half. You can use cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, whatever you prefer. And then I have some organic baby spinach. So what we're gonna do is we are just gonna the, add the spinach to the bottom of the bowl. I think we're gonna use all of it. Actually, I think I'm gonna keep a handful because I have another recipe I'll probably use that for. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put our spinach at the bottom. Then we have our tomatoes and our feta cheese. And when I, when the pasta, after I strain the pasta, I'm gonna put it right inside of the spinach. And it's gonna kind of wilt it a little bit, which is perfect. We want it just to wilt it down without having to really cook our spinach. In the meantime, I could keep making fondue. You guys, when you guys try this, you're gonna be so blown away at how simple it could be right without having to add a ton of stuff in your food uh, i don't know how many of you saw the um ice cream i did the other day i just did i had the frozen bananas and then i just added uh i think i added mango to it sometimes i do cherries sometimes i do mango whatever i'm in the mood for now that i think about this chocolate maybe i should be adding chocolate to it right all right, so the, to me, the frozen bananas aren't working as well as fresh bananas. Fresh bananas, it sticks on there really well. All right, it's so funny. I have like a plate of chocolate over here with just berries in it <laughs> and bananas. <laughs> so there we go. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. And the nice thing about our fondue kit, it comes with this little tray. So if you needed to put the fondue fork down, you can, and it holds it for you. So that makes it simple that you're not dropping it all the way in the pan. Right, so I'm gonna do some more cherries. And then I'm gonna check on those noodles in a second here, see how they're doing. So I had some raspberries, but we ended up eating them all. That's another thing, is trying to hold on to the, the fruit long enough to do something like this because we all wanna eat it right away. Like I said, I just bought like eight bananas that I think on a couple days ago and they're already all gone. I'm gonna do one with leaving the stem on just because it looks pretty. I think it looks pretty. <laughs> All right, there we go. So our timer is getting ready to go off for our pasta. There we go. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. <laughs> wait till you guys see. Wait till you try it. I can't wait till you guys try it. I hope that you guys try these recipes that I'm doing because I try to keep them really simple so that everyone can try them at home. I don't try to come up with a bunch of crazy recipes that it's like, where do you get that ingredient? Where do you get that ingredient now? I like it to be nice and easy. And sometimes we don't know where to buy things. We find a, a great recipe, but we can't find certain things. So I just like to be able to do simple recipes that people can do right out of their kitchen without having to run all over the place to find ingredients. Okay, so there we go. Our pasta timer is going off, so let's check it out and see if it's done. Maple over here. I didn't close it. See, I probably would have picked that up and spilled it if I hadn't noticed. Okay, turn off the timer. Oh yeah, the, this pesto is done. So I just have my basket here in my sink, and I'm just gonna go ahead and drain the pasta into there. So an easy way to put the handle on. Let me show you here. Is when the pan's hot because I've been boiling, so I know it's hot. I'm gonna put the cover on and use the top of the cover to hold the pan still, and then I could snap the handle right on. So that was super simple, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and drain this, drain these noodles. Woohoo, it's heavy. All right. So I'm not, <laughs> I try to cook the noodles usually in a sauce or something so I don't have to worry about straining them, especially I don't do real well with draining hot stuff. I'm a little bit short, so <laughs> when I try to strain things over the sink, I, it, the steam and everything goes up in my face. So anyways, so there we go. I have this strained. It's easy. We're just gonna go ahead and put that right on top of the spinach. And because they're so hot, they're gonna help uh, wilt the spinach just a little bit. So instead of having to throw it in the pan and like lots of recipes say, wilt your spinach for two minutes. Really? I really don't wanna wet, uh, you know, waste, waste that time, first of all, or <laughs> have to dirty a pan to wilt some spinach. So I just put put it right on top, and it's going to wilt it up for me. I probably 
I just should have waited on mixing it a little bit. All right, and then from there, you just add your cherry tomatoes. Oh, I forgot our main ingredient. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do a disappearing act really quick here. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna put the feta cheese on here. Well, this will give a, the spinach a little time to wilt too. So just hang in there. I'll be right back. I'll let you guys watch my, the beautiful roast that's cooking here. Okay, and I'm gonna go grab my pesto sauce. I'll be right back. See how fast I can go. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it wouldn't have been a big deal except for I had it in the garage refrigerator, right? So I had to go running out there. Let me rinse my hands off too because I'm not running around over there. And even though we've been walking around sanitizing everything, I still want to make sure now, watch, I won't even be able to get this open. Oh, fondue stick. Thank you. All right, and so I just have a little bit of pesto sauce. I usually like to make it myself, so I'll just get a... Uh, I'll just do basil and pine nuts, uh, a little bit of oil, and then I just leave the cheese out, and then you can make it vegan. But I figure since I'm putting the feta cheese in here anyways, I may as well go ahead and get the one that already has cheese in it. But if you're trying to do this vegan, you can leave off the feta cheese or use a vegan cheese, uh, or, or even just crum crumble some tofu over it, and then make your own pesto sauce. You just need basil, garlic, salt, or a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil and pine nuts and pine nuts are really expensive so if you want to not use the pine nuts you can actually get away with using uh, cashews or I think cashews are the only other thing I've made it with I don't think I've made it with almonds but I've definitely made it with cashews all right so there we go our pesto pasta salad and I'm just gonna mix this up this is great for potlucks and you can serve it warm or cold so I'm probably gonna do it cold, so that's why I'm doing it right now before the roast is done. And then I can stick it right into the fridge. But look at all the color, the tomatoes, the pasta, the spinach. You can use gluten-free noodles. So if you are trying to avoid gluten, just get gluten-free noodles. They don't have to be the bow tie. I just think the bow tie looks really cute in here. Anyway, so there we go. And you can see the spinach, a lot of the spinach is wilted up already. And that's a super simple recipe. I mean, for most people, this could be dinner, right? You could just, you could put some asparagus in here. You could put some broccoli in here. Um, and this could be dinner. If you're vegetarian, super simple dinner. Just add some, uh, like I said, asparagus. You can add um, the pine nuts right in here. You could add broccoli. I've done it with broccoli and it is really good. Just I just cut the broccoli on the Salamaster food processor and does on the number three cone. So it makes small little bite size pieces. I mean, they're really little. And then I mix that in here too. It's delicious with asparagus. So I'm sure you could think of other vegetables that you could put in here. If you have a favorite that you like, just add it right in. There we go. Pesto pasta salad and lots of chocolate. <laughs> Oh, we got lots of chocolate. All right, so we have a beautiful chocolate fondue. Let me get one ready for you. Okay, so we have some beautiful chocolate covered strawberries. Woo, <laughs> it tripped on my counter. And a beautiful pasta salad. So you can have dinner and dessert. All right, all right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me in Grandma Gina's Kitchen. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, um, share, like, and let me know if you guys need anything or you have any requests. Again, Grandma Gina's Kitchen. See you soon. Have a great day.